He has certainly made his mark on the PBA Tour at such a young age. EJ Tackett has six wins in the past two years and is looking for number seven at the main event PBA Tour Finals from Orlando right now. This is the main event entertainment center in Orlando. It's where four of the world's best bowlers are competing for a PBA Tour title as we continue coverage of the main event PBA Tour finals on CBS Sports Network. Today we feature the group two stepladder semifinals. EJ Tackett, Ryan Simonelli, Dom Barrett, and Tommy Jones compete to win group two for a chance to bowl group one winner Jason Belmonte on the championship show. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Orlando. Continuing coverage of the PBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Great to have you with us. Dave Ryan alongside the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and bottom line partner. Four more superstars in the sport on center stage today, but only one can win Group 2. Yeah, it's four great players uh, on tap for today. And looking at Tommy Jones, you know, the, can he right the ship? He hasn't looked very very good throughout the competition, but can he duplicate what Jason Belmonte did last week, and that's climb the ladder and capture this group two event when I look at Ryan Simonelli I see a couple of things he's the only southpaw and he doesn't have to fight through Jesper Svensson's wake anymore and he's looked great throughout the competition but all eyes still point to EJ Tackett the number one seed he averaged almost 250 and almost had a perfect game 299 I think all roads still point through and go through EJ Tackett time to meet the four bowlers on the show today here's our master ceremonies Dennis McCamery it's time to meet our four players in the Group 2 Step Ladder Finals. Group 2 Step Ladder Finals, the number four seed with 18 PBA Tour titles from Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. His first opponent is the three seed holding five PBA Tour titles from Colchester, England, Dom Barrett. The winner of that match faces the number two seed with seven PBA Tour titles from Cheektowaga, New York, Ryan Simonelli. And the winner of that match faces reigning PBA Player of the Year, E.J. Take. To see who advances to the championship match of the main event PBA Tour Finals. All right, Dennis, thanks so much. We are ready for match one here. Randy Peterson, Barrett Jones. What are you looking for? Well, Tommy has kind of struggled throughout the competition. Don Barrett's looked pretty good. So it's going to be real interesting to see how they attack this pair. Are they going to hook it? Or are they going to go straight? Because both players have done both throughout the competition. It's hard to bet against Tommy Jones. He's so good on television. Jones, the seventh seed, to start our event. Don Barrett, the three seed. Tommy Jones gets us going. Tied the ball in Orlando, all 10 down for TJ. Great opening shot there by Tommy Jones. And you wonder why bowling isn't in the Olympics. Well, let's see. Last week, we had Australia versus Sweden. This gentleman hails out of England. Now well, they'll get it right sooner or later. Be fun to see. Tom Barrett's first shot. All 10 down, good start. And both players playing the lanes very similar to start. Tom working that rosin bag. Keeps it in his pocket. Wiping the oil off the ball. Pre shot routine, very important. Five time PBA Tour titleist, one major to his credit. Seventh year pro from England. Good start, two early strikes. Both players using 16 pound equipment. Half the players in this event using 16 pounds, and we're seeing more and more of that 
the pros going back to the heavier weight, more hitting power, and a little bit stronger dynamics when you're talking about radius of gyration and differentials. Only one and three, 965 total pins for Jones. Group two round robin. Disappointing by his standards. That's not a disappointing shot at all. 10 down. Now, Tommy Jones uh, was a power player when he first came out on tour, and now with all the power, he's kind of a tweener. But he can still get after it. Real high back. I mean, Tommy's a great athlete, baseball player back in the day, and just a great hand. I love the fact that his hand is open at the top of the swing so he can work the inside part of the ball. Jones tries to continue the perfect start to reach and does that. Knocks 10 back into the pit. So you mentioned earlier, Randy, that each of these bowlers, Jones and Dom Baird, taking that similar path to the pocket. <coughs> what point will it deviate? How deep into this match? Well, it, it, you know, with every shot, the playing field changes. And so these players are going to have to stay in front of the transition. As soon as they see the ball go just a pinch high, they know it's time to move. Sometimes you anticipate that move before that even happens. Players get a feel for that and how the lanes transition throughout the course of an event. Very similar style, the high backswing, open hand. These two players mirroring one, one another right now on the lanes. That is interesting. How long is that going to last? Good frame for Barrett. Everybody perfect so far. Seven in a row between these two star bowlers. Up steps Tommy Jones. One and one head to head with Dom. Round robin play. Got 50 bonus pins for winning that five pin match 227 222. Who's going to be the first to miss? Fourth frame for Jones. It is. It's Tommy. So that's the transition I was talking about. But Tommy looked like he got a pretty good handful on that shot. Check this out. Pretty good location. The ball just breaks loose. And that could be transition already. Cover does nicely. Good placement on the spare. <clears throat> Stay clean. It is our hammer tough spare replay. And what makes this difficult is the back pin, the nine pin. And you got to have some power to catch the three and drive through it to catch that back pin, the nine pin. And Tommy does it perfectly. Frame for Jones. Back in the groove. And that was high flush. He'll probably make a move after that. Now, here's the thing. Don Barrett's stepping up on the right lane. He's perfect. But he just watched Tommy Jones go high. As a player, that has to enter your mind. Do you make the adjustment now? Do you move off of that? Even though you've struck every time on this lane. And that's the transition. Every time a ball goes down that, that oil pattern it takes oil off the lane when you're using reactive resin oh. he didn't like it and avoid a split seven pin only here for Barrett that's why I found it so interesting right at the top Randy when you mentioned that these players were using similar paths to the pocket well this one just gets away from him gets wide of target 
but the friction on that lane gets the ball back. He almost struck. That was early. All right, come on. Roll it out. Tom using a Maverick Pearl, pretty strong. Take a look at it when he puts his hand in the ball, folks. You'll see a yellow pin. I'll show you this right here. There it is, that yellow pin. You see how it's above the fingers? That's going to create length and back end. That's a locator pin telling you where the top of the weight block is. It's like we're the same. Left lane. Coming at a touch high, nine pin. Very good on the. Well, Dave, you talked about how long it's going to last, and it lasted four frames. So now things change dramatically. <sighs> Players have to move left, and the angles have to open up a bit. Single pin, spare conversion, no problem there for Dom Barrett from England. Ian Jones, good matchup here. Match number one, group two semifinals. Group two, semifinal step ladder action underway. Don Barrett, Tommy Jones head to head. Randy, now time for today's track tech talk involving Don Barrett. Yeah, this is a beautiful game and five step approach with a high back swing and he creates a lot of unassuming power. Again, the hand to the inside part of the ball and the great balance at the bottom of the swing and the foul line. But here's how he creates that power. There's the open hand there. And then on the way down, he's gonna cup the wrist and the elbow. There it comes. So that cupping and then the uncupping at the bottom of the swing is what creates revolutions, folks. Dom Barrett does it beautifully. Good breakdown of Dom's game there, Randy. 11 pin lead. Thank you, Dave. Group two semifinal match number one. Step ladder play here. We're gonna take on Ryan Simonelli. Our top seed is EJ Tackett. After round robin play. Jones strikes for his first five frames. Cut it to a one pit match. Oh Let's my. Do that hey, split. Tommy right now cannot believe how much the right lane is broken down in front of him. Three, four, six, seven. right through the, the schnozzola. Tommy's gonna try to get his ball over here and throw the three pin into the four seven. The ball will take out the six. Does it, nice conversion for Tommy Jones. That is a big shot. Well, just a tremendous shot here by TJ. We talked about him being a great split shooter, and he is. Proves it right here, keeping him in the match with two big split conversions in the fourth and the sixth. Tyrant Pearl, his orb of choice. Left lane for Jones. Looking good. And right now, Tommy Jones working harder than a one-eyed cat trying to stay in this match. I moved two and one, and I, I drifted away from an accident. It's a new Randy line. Add that to your repertoire. Well, you know. I'm not going to deny that I do have a writer, but. 999, pretty good. All 10 down. Tom Flight Cassie wow. is here. Made a long trip from England. A bowler herself and nutritionist. She's on the left. She's Australian and bowled for Team Australia for a while. Pretty good to have a. She's on the left. Ryan Simonelli's wife on right. the in the middle. Jeremy from main event on the right as well. Uh, 
Well, we saw a couple of those last week by Belmo, but she was. It didn't cost him. I'll tell you what this does, though. It keeps Tommy Jones in the match. Lanes are transitioning very quickly right now. The next shot for Tommy Jones on the right lane is going to be very interesting. Nine pin, no problem there for Don Barrett. Tommy Jones does finish on the right lane. And it's at frame. Last two shots, seven and six, both big splits for TJ. Right lane here, eight frame. Down by 11. One victory in the four matches of round robin play. Jones in the eighth. That's going to hurry. Wow, we like. And the one, two, four up. Shot. Not close. Shot. No need for me to comment. Tommy did it for us. Just a bit outside. Right lane. Four six the eight frames trouble the first shot for Jones, but he does convert the spare to keep things interesting. Tommy talks to us about what turned his career around. Wow. Now he's headed for the Hall of Fame one day. I got a healthier again. Uh, my body went through some times where I had some injuries and stuff, and you know you can't beat the best of the world with some injuries. Um, you know, started doing some bad things physically, bowling-wise. You know, just to kind of give into it. It was it was a lot me, and uh, just got in a bad habit, and you know was kind of surviving, but wasn't winning. And, and now we're back to where uh, I feel like I can win every time I show up. And he can. He's proved it. Had a great season last season. Oh boy. There she is. Bring in 10 pin. A little ahead of it. A little ahead of it, and then it won't go through him. You're trying to make it. You can see. Well, this match is now ripe for the taking for Dom Barrett. Max score if Tommy makes this 226. Dom can shoot 248. Time time. Let's watch it. He whips on the 10 pin. And the door really opens wide now for Dom Barrett. On the bench sees the miss and the open frame. He'd be a Hall of Famer. Jason Couch speaks there with Tommy Jones. Oh, he fought so hard to stay in this, only to lose the right lane completely and then with the 10 pin. So right lane for Barrett here, trying to take advantage. Put things away. It's a high shot. And the three six up could have been worse. Right lane is completely imploded. This looks really good, and then all of a sudden it just goes sideways. Has to spare to stay clean. That's the most important thing now after Jones had that late open. I'm sure Dom is glad he's wrapping up on the left lane here. I'll tell you one guy that's finding this very entertaining is Ryan Simonelli, our only southpaw. On. There's nothing wrong with that one. Well, just when we wrote Tommy Jones off, this is not over. That is a disastrous shot late so high. Ends up in a tough split. 4 7 10. If he doesn't make this, Tommy Jones can double in the 10th and win. He doesn't make it. 10 pin stands, open frame. Tommy's got to oh. finish on the right lane. He hasn't hit the pocket. Since frame two. He struck in the second. Troubles in the fourth, sixth, eighth. 
And here is the 10th. What's going through his mind on that right lane? Clueless. He has no idea what to do. He's going to make an educated guess and try to execute and hope it works. He knows if he gets it right, it hangs. If he gets it up the lane, it's going to go through the nose. Looks like he's moved in. I like this play. Got to have a couple. There's one. It was, it was the right move. He moved in and, and moved his target with it. Don Bear can't believe it. He's a strike in eight. Kurt. Kurt. No re Tommy's going to take a re rack as we take a look. Inside third arrow now. Remember where they started? They were really close to second arrow. That's a good six boards left at, at the arrows. One more just like it. And at least eight. And Tommy Jones is going to move on. Wow. But it's the right lane. So, what adjustment now? No adjustment. He made it. <clears throat> Stay the course. Now the execution. Needs it to advance. Tommy Jones gets it. Back-to-back -back jacks on his troublesome right lane late for a rally against Don Barrett in our first match. Well, let me tell you how impressive this is because, number one, you're so apprehensive because you don't know what the ball's going to do. You make a move, and it works, and now you got to follow it up with a duplicate. Tommy Jones does it perfectly. Tom Barrett is stunned right now. As we all are. Looked like this was over. Eight pins now for the win for Jones. In our first match, stepladder semifinals, group two. Eight for the win, seven tie. Anything less? Eight for victory. How's nine? How's a win for Tommy Jones? What is that? I mean, they're like. Oh, yeah. 214, 212. Ryan Simonelli next for Tommy Jones. Righty lefty matchup from Orlando. An exciting finish. Jones advances. Dramatic finish. Tommy Jones in match one over Don Barrett. Three seed in group two. So now step ladder bowling. Simonelli Jones are next up. EJ Tack at the top seed. We'll take on the winner of match two in a two game total pinfall match to determine the group two winner. Group two winner will take on group one winner Jason Belmonte in our championship show from here in Orlando. Right now, Tommy Jones fresh off. An incredible finish with Barrett. See how he responds in his second game. That lane, 10 pin. Well, it looks like he's gone to a different ball and <clears throat> moved farther left. Good move, good ex execution, and uh, not so much on the cooperation part of the 10 pin. Missed one of these in the last match and still ended up winning. No problem this time. From Simpsonville, South Carolina, a big Gamecock well, fan. <clears throat> not Clemson. Not ever. Tell you what, if Ryan Simonelli has a good look, he may be unbeatable. Like that take. Lefty, just outside Buffalo. Great collegiate career at Erie Community College, was the National Rookie of the Year and All American. That set up a tremendous pro career. Little Swisher leaving the 10 pin. Ryan throwing the big curve at that 10 pin. See that a lot. 
Those players throwing it straight and hard and taking the oil pattern out of play. But Ryan's got a fresh field, a fresh playing field on his side. In his second in the round robin group, two. DJ Tackett. He's the top seed, wait to the top of the ladder now. Dom Barrett. Lost DJ Tackett head to head in round robin play. Also a win over Tommy Jones. And here they are together again. That round robin match play score was 257, 221 for Simonelli. Tommy going to his interchangeable thumb. Several of the grip companies now offer that. Second frame, first track of that right lane. It was such a problem for him in the first game. What a great start here in his second match. Look at that rotation, beautiful. Beautiful axis tilt, and that time the 10 gets taken care of. And I should have said interchangeable thumb grip, because now it sounds like he's had surgery where he can have multiple thumbs on his right hand. And that's not what I meant. That is to say. not the case at all. I knew what you meant. Thank but you. Good to clarify. <laughs> Always good to clarify. DJ, all 10 down left lane. Nice ball change and good adjustment there. <clears throat> Ryan defeated Tommy Jones. Round robin match play. <laughs> Looks good there in the right lane, all 10 down from hoops to hockey, the diamond to the gridiron. Morning's most outrageous team has you covered. Don't miss Boomer and Carton presented by Gillette Pro Shield. Weekday mornings at 6 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Boomer Esiason, right? Yes. I love him. Ex quarterback for the Bengals. He does a nice job. Simonelli. A little off the pocket that time from the left side. Single pin conversion coming up. Well, it looked like he lost it off his hand at the bottom of the swing. Watch his follow through here. Now we've seen it go inside of his head, but that looked like it was short. Has a six pin, has his mark. He looked down right away, didn't like it. Yeah, he kind of came back looking at his hand like, kind of like the wet bar of soap. Out of the hand syndrome, you know, where all three fingers kind of come out at the same time, but his ball still curved, so he must have helped it just a pinch at the bottom. Now, TJ working on a double. Can right lane. Looks for the turkey, going for 11, yeah. Feeling good on that right lane right now. And three straight for an 11-pin lead. So let's take a look at Tommy Jones and see where he was playing game one on the left lane. And you can see how much farther left he is here in game two. Progressing left, getting deeper. Fifth frame for the four bagger. Tommy Jones, all 10 down, looking good. 60 feet to success for TJ. The motion looks perfect now, and Tommy Jones has a lot of confidence in his ball reaction.
Good frame for Simonelli trying to respond. Does just that. Ryan talked to us pre-event, Randy, about his first step on the approach. He's made some adjustments as we check his arsenal. Do you like the approach and what you see from him technically? Yeah, absolutely. He's using a vandal destroy, but you know he's worked a lot with Mike Jazz now. Uh, when he had the op when he has the opportunity, Mike Jazz now in Reno. Uh, I'm sorry, in Vegas now, but uh, Jazz now got him to get the ball into the swing a little bit sooner, and it really freed his swing up. Ryan told us it feels a lot more natural now. Easier to get the ball to that one-two pocket. Case in point there. Halfway home, match two. Jones Simonelli, 11 pins separate these two great bowlers in Orlando. Head to PBA.com to check out the latest PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game for iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. More than 18 million people have downloaded the popular game, which now features the new lanes of Route 66 and Lane 51. Check on the PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game link at PBA.com and get started today. Do you have yours downloaded? I do. Awesome. I play it every time I get on a flight. Pre-flight routine, we all have one. It's good. Tommy Jones, red hot, looks for the five bagger, six frame here. Span the lead at 21 pins. Right lane, yeah. Feeling good, thank you. Now that adjustment's really blended out this pattern that got kind of squirrely in that opening match. Tommy Jones right now kind of feels like free willy. He's got left and right, and that frees up the arm swing. <clears throat> See if we can pick up a tracer on the lane when he lets go of this one, following the ball down the lane and into the pins. TJ takes a moment. Looks here for six in a row, seventh frame. Well, that finds the one-three pocket nicely. Crunches 10 back into the pit. And the lead balloons again. So, you know, every player has bigger arms based on it's not my telly. What what hand they throw it with, but check out this arm versus this arm. Ryan Simonelli's right arm looks like it's been in a cast for six months. His left arm is gigantic. Is that common? Look at the size it of that is, thing. It's enormous. I mean, it, well, I don't really it, know it's, that's it's, it's common to be a little bit bigger, but his, bit. Is, his is like four, four sizes Pronounced. bigger. I mean, look at that thing. Forearm, bicep, everything. It's the forearm right into the yeah, right into the bicep. It's so striking. It's almost like one. Of, it's almost like one of those little old ladies you see in Vegas that are constantly pulling on the one arm bandit. And that one arm gets a big workout and the other one doesn't. Tack it as the top seed. Awaits the winner. Yeah, good shot. Keep he keeps himself in it. Like Chelsea in the middle there, rooting on Ryan. Coming to us from the Buffalo area. Seven titles and a major to Simonelli's credit, U.S. Open champ. Tommy Jones, oh, Hall good. of Fame credentials for his resume. 18 titles, two majors. Simonelli max score 269, TJ 290. He's got to keep striking to keep Simonelli off of his back. How about seven straight, Tommy? Yeah. Stays red hot. They're all ending up in a really good spot right now, and that's perfect in the one three. <clears throat> Just inside fourth arrow. He thought it was going high, and that's how much room he's got now with that bowling ball and with the line that he's playing. Seven out of eight strikes. For Jones, six out of eight for Simonelli. We've got a great match coming down to the ninth and tenth frame. Right down to the wire, nothing like it on the PBA tour. 
Foundation frame for TJ looks for the eight bagger. Eight straight, yes. In the zone and not leaving anytime soon. Tommy Jones. Making him look pretty easy Slap now. Hands. Tennis players often have that pronounced difference between their playing hand and forearm and their non playing hand. Simonelli, left lane, looks oh. for a tap on the seven pin, doesn't get it. Yeah, a pin was sticking right out of the a pin was sticking out of the left gutter and it denied the messenger a chance to take the seven out. And this might be all for Ryan Simonelli. Watch that. Unlucky here. Tommy Jones found it and then executed. And now max score for Ryan is 248. Tommy Jones is already in the 260s, does not even need a mark in the 10th. Well, imagine that. Tommy Jones was on the verge of losing to Don Barrett in the first game. Late break, took advantage. Not Barrett out, climbing the ladder. And now it looks like Simonelli would be the next victim. Weird. 40 and lose. Not like he bowled, bowled poorly, as no. he just said. Could be a 240 and not win here. But Jones has been that much better. I don't think Tommy Jones has missed flush, though, the whole game. Everything has been very Brian did leave that shaker 10 in the first and came in a bit high, leaving the six pin in the fourth. And then the messenger there in the ninth, but he could Always very like easily be shooting 279 right, right about now. That's why it's so tough in a one-game match. And he did bowl well. Great game, bro. Absolutely, 248. Uh, Tommy Jones on the verge of advancing up the ladder to take on the top seed, EJ Tackett. Ryan Simonelli averaged over 240 throughout the competition here, and he is not going to advance. And that just tells you how tough the competition is. Jones looks for his ninth straight strike. Wow. That one three pocket has no chance against Tommy Jones right now. And he has advanced to take on EJ Tackett. Group two championship. Two game total pinfall match coming up. Jason Belmonte won group one. Oh. It's all gone. Tommy's way. He's saying maybe I should save that for later. You might need it. It is our Barbazol close shave of the day, Randy. You need to save that one. You need to save that one. Let's... He's going to give this one a little room to the right. This is called area oh, no. check. And it comes in a little light. And the little love tap on the 10 coming your way right about now. Didn't any help that time. 290. Tommy Jones, fantastic, and a win over Ryan Simonelli. And next, he'll take on the top seed of Route 2, EJ Tackett. Randy will speak with EJ when we return to Orlando, Florida. 11 straight strikes for Tommy Jones. 290, 248 beats Ryan Simonelli to climb the ladder. Next up for Tommy, the top seed, EJ Tackett. Joined lane level now by our Randy Peters. Thanks, Dave. EJ, I know that you watched the last match, and Tommy Jones made a, a pretty big move. What did you learn from that? Um, you know, he made the ball change, and he moved pretty far inside. I don't know how that's going to affect me because, you know, so far nobody's been that, that far left, and I've had to bowl after him. So um, I'll know after my practice shots to see uh, what I'll have to do. Let's go back a couple of weeks ago where you had the front 11 a chance to shoot 300. What was that like and what went through your mind when you got it for the 12th shot? It was very nerve wracking. Um, as you probably know, you know, being in that position because not very many people have done that and both 300 on TV. Um, you know, the, the money it makes it a little bit more nerve wracking, but just to be in that group of people that have both 300 on TV is definitely 
It was definitely nerve-wracking. Hey, man, thanks for your time and good luck. Thank you. Rematch of the 2016 17 PBA Tournament of Champions in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Masters and a major champ. EJ Tackett, Jones coming up next. Climbing the stepladder, Tommy Jones from the fourth seed over Barrett. Ryan Simonelli in a single game traditional match now. It is two game total pinfall to win group two. Now to take on the group one winner, Jason Belmonte for the PBA Tour Finals Championship from here in Orlando. This will be fun. EJ, TJ, underway. All 10 down for Tackett. Rematch of the 2017 Fire Lake PBA TOC title match in Oklahoma. Shocking finish. We saw the flashback earlier. What that meant to EJ to win his first career major, five pin victory. Tommy Jones faltering late. Faces tacking again today. All 10 down for Tommy. The tale of two games, Tommy Jones left for dead in match one against Don Barrett. Doubles in the 10th on a lane that absolutely gave him fits. And then he shoots 290 the next game. 214, 290. Simple math means he's averaging over 250 now for two games. That's pretty good. And last week, Belmonte averaged two, right at 250 for his four games. And Tommy Jones on pace to do the same thing and climb the ladder again. Oh, right oh. Get some help from the nine pin. And down it goes for a good start for Jones. So Tommy had a great line to the pocket last game, but he was the only right-hander. And now we've got EJ Tackett on this championship pair, and the lanes are going to transition again, especially with EJ Tackett and his big rev rate. Front lane for EJ, 10 pin. They didn't like it, got around it early. Four TV shows last year from Huntington, Indiana, not too far from Indy. Seven titles. Two majors for the youngster. There's a 10 pin. Thousand twelve, thirteen rookie of the year, Chris Schenkel player of the year last year. EJ Taggett really gets the body running to the foul line to create speed and power. Even though this is a spare ball, he still gets that backswing way up and then kind of lets it fly. Comes up on his toe and coming in late. Just a little late getting to the one three, leaving those half tens. TOC, world championship winner. Saw the numbers leading him to the top seed position here in group two. Weekdays at three, Eastern former All Pro Tiki Barber and co host Brandon Tierney bring their sports expertise and Red Hot Radio takes the television. Catch Tiki and Tierney right here on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Now for Tommy, no, he's voted number 30 in the top 50 back in 2009. Where's Tommy right now in your mind? Top players of all time. Oh, wow. That's a tough question. I mean, I would certainly move him up the list from 30 without question. I mean, he's got to easily be top 20. Player of the year in 2006. That's a pretty strong list. You know, 
I know another guy that made that list. I, think he was I do too. He's right next to me. 35th? You should be up higher. No, that was very generous. <laughs> Both players using asymmetrical bowling balls. I'll explain that in a minute. Tommy. <laughs> ten Ooh. pin, not this time. Well, the scout came across the deck and just missed the 10 pin to break a long strike streak. I crept. I've been 14 straight. Ted Pitt got redirected on the way back to the 10 pin. And getting back to the bowling balls, we have two types of balls we use on tour, symmetrical and asymmetrical. I want you to think of the core of the bowling ball as the engine. When, when you're using an asymmetrical ball, that's a big engine, big core. Gets the ball rolling, really digging into the lanes. Both players using what we call asims or big bowling balls. I move one. I move one. I think you never got in there, though. Yeah, I, moved, yeah. I paralleled, and I probably should have went. Advice from PBA Hall of Famer Jason Couch. Basically a former neighbor of yours, Claremont, right? Yes, sir. There it is, his arsenal, Ghost Jackal, number one on the hook potential chart. Jay Tackett all 10 down. You were speaking with EJ about that near 300 game earlier in the PBA Tour Finals. Let's flash back. Well, it was uh, really fun to watch, and he was just swinging it, having fun, open the lane up. And on the last shot, he got just a little too much of it. The ball hooked heavy and went four pin. So close. Almost had a really tough four six split, just the four pin. How quickly are the lanes going to change and how quickly are they going to transition? Both players pretty heavy handed using strong bowling balls. Whoa, we whiffed it. And missed the four pin. Shocking for EJ Tackett. Open frame. This is a two game total pinfall match. But Tommy Jones just saw that lead go way up. Missed it by a quarter of an inch. That's surprising. Tommy, who had a grind out, went over Don Barrett first match and get lucky a late break. And a mistake from Barrett. Steamrolled Simonelli in match two. Now he's got a big opening here in the third match. Strikes to take advantage. And expand his lead. Not just this game, though. Two game total pinfall will determine the group two winner. See if we can pick up the ball going through the blue oil on this shot. Looks really cool. Six frame looks for the double. Wow. Good looking shot, 10 pin stands. Well, he's looking to take advantage of the opening and a good shot. Remember, he went flat 10 in the fourth, so he moved him. Jason Couch decided we'll make a little move, and he did, and it was a ring and 10 this time. Whoa, and he misses the spare. 10 pin. I can't believe it. Ah. Two single pin spare conversion misses. One from EJ, now one from Tommy Jones. And the match shifts again dramatically. More coming up from Orlando. Eight great bowlers, the top eight money earners from 2015 until now on the PBA Tour making this field. First ever PBA Tour Finals. We'll have it for you from start to finish on CBS Sports Network. Here's EJ Tackett. Championship match, group two. Total pinfall, two games. Tackett, right lane. A 
ball 10 down. They really get a good look on that angle. The ball going through the blue oil. EJ Tackett looking to strike again to cut the deficit to 10. But take a look at this. The line that this ball creates going through that oil. Ten in the pit, looking to do it again. Cut the lead to ten. Or the deficit, I should say. Back in it. New match after the open frame for Tommy Jones. So now to the seventh frame of game one. Two game total pinfall. For the right to meet Jason Belmonte for the title. How will Tommy respond? Have that open on the left lane, now back to the right lane. They have been cruising with 14 strikes combined over two games. Here's the answer. Whoa. Yes. It is high. It is a split. I don't know if he got Make soft or if that ball just hooked oh, early, but it was definitely go slower. Three, four, six, seven. One mistake compounded by another. This ball never gets to the right, and he pays for it. Three, four, six, seven. He made one of these in game one against Simonelli. I'm sorry, against Dom Barrett in the sixth frame. Tries again and only gets a seven pin count out of it. Wow. That back, hurts. Um, back to back disasters and now he's trailing by three. Back shot. So Tommy Jones facing major adversity here. And EJ Tackett had his issues with the open in the fifth. But he is working on a double and watching things unravel here for TJ. Moving farther left. He keeps going to the left, and that's the move. Just a bad nice. shot on the right lane. Now Tackett working on a double. DJ only 24 years old. He thinks he might bowl up to 20 more years for the PBA Tour. Long way to go. All 10 down. Four titles last year. World Championship team challenge and Bear Open and the Storm Open as well. Follow that tracer. You can see the ball cutting right through the blue oil. Pretty cool. And a great shot by EJ Tackett to increase his lead. Make it 23 with a strike here. Looks for the four bagger, ninth frame. Oh, oh, help. Tap on the 10, down it goes. And lead expands for EJ Tackett. Tommy Jones looking for answers. Boy, did this match just flip-flop. Tommy Jones in complete control through five and some good pin action by EJ Tackett. Max score 237 for EJ. Max score 224 for Tommy Jones. Tommy Jones coming off 290, right now shooting 194. And he started with a three bagger. Much better. See how he projected that one to the right? Wow. So bad. Stay down. The good oh, news is. Hard. We got two games. Total pinfall. Time to get back into it. The tackets locked in. Strike numbers are even. A couple of opens for Jones. Just one for Tackett. That came in the fifth for Jones. Back to back in the sixth and seventh frames. Beautiful. Players both on both players on that left lane have moved in, and now they're tricking it up with their hand, trying to get the hand to go more around the side of the ball 
to get it to recover down lane. EJ Tackett did it in the ninth. Tommy Jones does it here in the tenth. Right now, Tommy Jones trying to just stay close. Strikeouts, you 224. The worst deficit you could have going into game two would be 13. Push, and it does it. Well, I'll tell you what, that three, four, six, seven, very common for Tommy Jones. He's left three of them. That is amazing. I haven't seen that many. Same lead for Jones. So he's down a bunch. There is a second game, total pinfall, two game score to win the group. Good cover there, nice. Oh, four down, nice pair. He's two for three on that split conversion. Pretty solid. That's how you do it right there. The big opening though in the seventh when he left the same thing and went 6-1. Tackett trying to close the door on game one. Now this looks like it was on an identical line as his last shot on this right lane. You can see the line there, you can see the whole line just left of fourth arrow, there it is. He's right on top of it and his ball just sits there like it's gliding on a sheet of glass. Gliding, good way to describe that. Perfection for Tackett. Again. A little higher this time, but yeah, it's it still a strike. He could have got after it a little bit more with his hand that time. Well, let's see what this next one looks like if, and if he's going to move off of that. There's the track. You can see it. Ball change here for his last shot. That's inside. And the seven pin stands and finish up his game. 236, 210. So a nice lead for EJ Tackett heading into the second and final game. Group two. Champion to be determined. Tackett Jones head to head. Look at how Tommy Jones and EJ Tackett are playing the right lane. You can see the lay down right there and then the track. E.J. Tackett right on top of Tommy Jones. Same line. And then watch the ball as it travels down that blue streak. E.J. Tackett right on top of it. Right, 236-210. Game one score, total pinfall. Determines a winner here in group two. One winner, Jason Belmonte. He will bowl for the championship. Keep the running score here. Tag up 26. Jones comes in high and leaves that the four seven. That could have been split. Remember the last that shot. I thought was pretty good. On that lane. I, mean, I moved a couple and thought that one was pretty good. Yeah. He went high, left it. The big split in the 10th frame, and he just got done telling Jason Couch, hey, I moved a couple and threw that good. Four seven. Every pin matters. Total pinfall here. We'll keep the score for you. Yes. Not of this game, but the total pinfall between these two two games winner takes group two Jay Tech a good start all right let's take a look at the opening shot for game two at EJ Tackett there's your line where's he gonna be now look at that inside a good two boards inside of that line now. Great way to 
follow the track of the bowling ball and something for the viewers to watch for. It's awesome. Yeah, EJ Tackett moved in again on the left lane and just ripped the cover off of that shot. Tommy Jones in a 36 pin hold now. 26 from game one and another 10 here. Time is now for Tommy. That lead gets too big, it'll be insurmountable. So second frame game two, but down by 36 pins. Works on a spare here. Second frame of game two. Third and final match, group two champ to be determined. Game level look at it. Beauty. All 10 down, nice shot. A loser will bowl for third place on the championship show against Svensson. Tommy Jones pretty much on that same line still. Maybe just a smidge left. Looks for the double third frame. Cut to 26. Boys a double wood. That's why I don't That's think I can for the other one. Two pin. I'm communicating back and forth with Jason Couch, and I asked Jason if he was going to make a ball change on this left lane, and Jason said no. He thinks the next ball that he could go to is going to go too long. That one did. Tommy moved in even deeper and threw pretty good, and the ball never picked up. So that same lineup for Tommy Jones on that left lane with a little less ball speed might get there. When I miss in, it's the other one. I don't think the other one will have a chance. Right. Jason Couch gives advice, 16-time PBA Tour titleist, Hall of Famer. Jay Tackett tries for the first three, has it, expands the lead. Look at this, he's up by 46 pins. The three straight to start it. Tommy Jones, EJ Tackett, two of five, along with Aldi Barnes and Jason Belmonte, who won Group one here, ball for the title in Orlando to be PBA rookie and player of the year in the same career. That's quite a list. Yeah, pretty, pretty awesome list to be a part of, I can tell you that. Right now, EJ Tackett's got it on cruise control. Wow. All over Tommy Jones like a bulldog on a pork chop. 56 pin lead. <laughs> and the front four. Yeah, he just the door. Three J attacking. That's what they are. Right now, she's got to stay the course. Jones needs the string strikes together. Can't waste a moment. Instead, he's got a tough split. Four, six, seven. Inside the line again, and Tommy Jones' ball reaction got destroyed by the likes of EJ Tackett. When EJ Tackett took to the lanes, Tommy Jones' ball reaction started to go downhill. Grab a ball. Tommy Jones grabbing another bowling ball. Yep, open frame here, and the lead just balloons for EJ Tackett on the bench. Tommy heads off set for a moment to grab some other equipment. The good news is, barring a major miracle and a comeback, that Tommy will pull for third place. So his time in Orlando is not done with this match. Climb the ladder to bowl so well to get here. Attack has been all over him in this final. Does get some help on number 10 there with a late nudge. No, but that's not real convincing. Put a great touch on this shot to get that ball to come around the corner and 
and just barely gets the 10 out with a soft messenger. Well, he was right on that tracer line again, and it's time for him to make a pretty good move to the left. He finds a new oil line to keep the ball from breaking too sharply into the head pit. 67 pin lead through a game and a half for EJ Tackett. Impressive. Well, that ball's being wow, coaches down all three. 2 6 10, and he's got his mark. And stays clean after the front four. First non strike of the second game. Up by 67. <laughs> It appears as if he will face Belmo for the championship. Wow. Everything but fall down. Uh, how that 10 pin stay up? Well, it's a ring and 10, and then the messenger comes over. It's not supposed to go down. But these young guys with all this power, I mean, watch this pin. This is a ring 10. Six goes around. I mean, this never happened 20 years ago. And now the youngsters come out with all this power and these incredibly strong bowling balls, and you see it all the time. Things have changed, haven't they? They really have. Tommy Jones, big hole. EJ Tackett looks good trying to win group two today. Love that guy. Was that a little Harry Carey in there? No, that's not Harry Carey. You'll know when it's Harry Carey. Okay, just yeah. want to make sure. I've heard your... Come on, Dave. Excellent impression. No, it's terrible. The late, great Hall of Fame broadcaster. It's not meant for this show. Tommy Jones down 66. Does work on a strike here. Two game, total pinfall. Group two final. Interesting. I mean, what kind of comeback would this be if Tommy could somehow bail this out? He could still strike out for 246. Yeah, new ball inside the track line, and it lays there and faces up perfectly. He'd need to throw eight in a row to finish this game to get to 246. Seventh frame, seeks the turkey, and ah. doesn't have it. Ah. Has trouble instead with a 210. Ten pin stands. What, if anything, did you talk to Tommy about after the heartbreak at the TOC? Well, I asked him, you know, what what happened to him mentally after that, and he said, you know, I I let it go immediately, and uh, it was just one of those things. I did everything right, except his tendency is to drift away from his target, and when you do that with urethane and your angles open up just a bit, it, it, it could prove disastrous, and that's what happened. You know, he went high on that right lane, the shot before, now he gets back on that right lane needing a mark, and of course his brain said, all right, let's make a little bit, let, let's make a move, and he did, but then when he drifted left, that doubled and tripled the move, and that caused the washout. Shocking finish, EJ Tackett won a major as a result. Well, this is about to win here in Orlando. Sorry, Dave, this is over, and he's going to take on Jason Belmonte next week for the title. Tommy Jones and Jesper Svensson will bowl for third in a one-game match. And that'll be a great third-place match, by the way. These two bowling so well in Orlando in this event. First time ever, PBA Tour Finals. The world's best on display. Wait. The title match is the reigning player of the year <laughs> and the guy before him who won it three years in a row, Jason Belmonte. You know, 
it, it, it's just the marquee matchup. It, it, it really is the matchup that, that you were looking for. And it was the number one and number two players as they came into this event based on prize money earned over two and a half years. At a gunfight. <laughs> Knife at a gunfight, he said. You know, EJ Tackett is uh, doing exactly what he needs to do, and he's keeping it in play. He overcame that open frame when he missed the single pin spare. Ten pin on that shot on the right lane. Yeah, you're right. He's just been so solid. Six strikes in this match. Yeah. yeah, you go back and you look at uh, PBA champion Chris Warren and looking back at his stature back in the 90s Chris Warren was uh, was a, a, a really dominant force PBA champion and he was a real small guy that created a lot of power and it's it's kind of eerie the the uh, similarities between EJ Tackett and Chris Warren I think Chris Warren's actually smaller than EJ Tackett Chris Warren could hook it gutter to gutter but very similar in styles they both you know run to the foul line to create ball speed and then really snap on it at the bottom I remember a match between Chris Warren and Bob Vespi for a title talk about two guys that could curve it and slow curve it pretty fun to watch Chris Warren came out on top all 10 down again for AJ we look forward to watching Tackett. Well, nice ball. Thank you. Head to head with Belmonte for the championship in Orlando. Jones and Spenson will also bowl each other in a one game match for third place. Top finish for Tommy. We both so well to get here. Yeah, I mean, he really did. He fought his way through the first match, doubling in the tenth to beat Don Barrett. Then he bowls 290 against Ryan Simonelli. And now Simonelli's looking at this going, well, why me? I would have had a really good chance against EJ Tackett, averaging 248, but was it to be EJ Tackett? Destroyed the right side of the lane for Tommy Jones. and. That was the big difference. It was the Delane's transitioning and breaking down that was the undoing for TJ. 06 US Open, 07 TOC. Two majors for Tommy Jones. His great career. Ten time member of Team USA. Finished here against Tackett. E.J. Tackett, an easy win over Tommy Jones. He'll take on Jason Belmonte for the championship. We've got more from Orlando on the way. Grand Casino Road to the championship. Thanks, Dave. Match number one came down to the 10th frame. Tommy Jones got a huge break when Don Barrett split. He needed a double and count. Got the first one. There's the second. Tommy Jones, his last shot here gets nine, and he takes down Don Barrett 214 to 212. Match number two featured TJ taking on Ryan Simonelli. Tommy makes a ball change, moves in, and it was nothing but strikes. It was a strike fest, TJ style. Starts with a spare, finishes with the last 11 for 290. And in the final match, he took on EJ Tackett, but this time it would be all EJ. Look at EJ swinging wood. After an open frame, EJ finishes with a six bagger to win game one, 236 to 210. And then in the final game, 
a little more EJ carrying some nice breaks, and it was over 234 to 186. Tommy, after the 290 game, what happened to your ball reaction when EJ stepped on the lane? Well, just that you know, EJ's rev rate's pretty high, and he just came over him. He was just—he was a little left of me, and then when I crept a little bit, I crept right into his traffic, and then. Uh, you know, just didn't have a very good ball progression from there to what to go to. Well, you, you, you bowled great, and we look forward to your match next week with Jesper Svensson. Yeah, it should be good. Jesper's been bowling good uh, throughout this whole event, so uh, we'll have one good match for $5,000. Thanks, bro. Yeah. EJ, well done. You know, I, I think uh, you've come a long way since the first time we actually did an interview before you even won on television. And I go back to game one where you missed the single pin spare, and then you followed it up with a six-bagger. What's the biggest difference for you now? I mean, that kind of stuff you just got to put out of your mind. You know, you're upset at the time when you miss the single pins. You know, that's the worst thing you can do mentally. Um, but you just got to put it out of your mind and focus on the next shot, what's in front of you, and uh, that's what I did. What was the biggest difference in ball reactions? Why were you able to do what you did and Tommy wasn't? Um, I, I'm really not sure because, you know, Tommy's been good at all over the lane, you know, his whole career. So, But for me, it was just, um, you know, I had to soften my ball speed up a little bit because we got a little bit farther left and there's so much volume there that I had to get my ball to, to read a little bit sooner. Talk about the matchup between you and Belmonte next week. What does he do to the lanes and how do the lanes transition when you compete against him? Well, that's that's interesting because I've seen him throw urethane this week or while we've been here and um, I've seen him throw reactive from the left gutter so it depends on what he does and uh, what my game plan is going to be. You looking forward to that matchup? Absolutely. Thanks man. Great job. Thank you. All right ready. Thanks with EJ and Tommy and we are looking forward to watching EJ Tackett who knocks off Tommy Jones for 73.96 the two game total pinfall score in match three to take group two. So he's the group two winner. Jason Belmonte is the group one winner and they'll face off for a PBA Tour title. The main